All right, a little update for you. So I actually um, cut the end of this wood off, as you can see. And I did that so I could get the magnet even closer. It's almost touching, really. Close as I can to the coil. And I just put some cardboard in there to protect it. But the idea here is, is I had about another inch of magnetic flux. And the closer you are to the magnet, usually the better induction. However, it also means it's closer to the wrong side of the coil. So it could actually have a negative effect. The second thing I did was the contacts that I had originally on here. Um, those little contacts were actually harder than the copper. So what is happening is the brush, if it starts to get pitted from the arcing, it starts eating into the copper and causing me massive problems. So it's a little hard to see, but I actually took some carbon brushes, drilled them out, fit them on there, glued them on there, then wrapped some uh, silver coated copper wire on there and soldered them so that I had some good contact. So there's your little update. Um, I wasn't getting, ju I just wasn't quite getting enough induction. So hopefully this helps, but it may actually cause more problems than help. So, yep, we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, the new brushes proved to be successful. That thing is smooth and cooking. Show you what the signal looks like. We are actually getting a uh, positive voltage there. Little peak right there. Little dip in current. So that's a good thing. However, more work to do. Okay, another reference for you. So we've taken this commutator. Ooh, that's bad. It's not bad, but that's loud. And we've cut in segments to sort of resemble the old commutator. Um, but we've done this in uh, 12 degree increments. And the ground is still connected to the coil where the positive is being broken. Um, we're doing this to test some basic ideas. And we left the other side solid so we could still get some good RPM out of this thing. Um, so the idea is to break um, and make the circuit while the magnet is passing the induction mode of operation. So there's still more to uh, do here, but I thought I'd document that since I had it. Some interesting results. Uh, just doing a few different things according to some uh, basic understandings. So yeah, there you go. And there it is running. I'm going to turn the lights off real quick so we can uh, see some of the arcs. A lot of light back here, huh? Hmm. Oh, there went one. I was going to say there's almost no sparks, but I can see a few every once in a while flashing over. I can't get too close. All right, scope shots running. Get some measurements on this guy. All right, just a reference for you. So you can see here, um, this is basically the battery voltage. And this is what the uh, peak looks like when it first turns on. So what that is, is we've got the green line here, which is the current flowing in the coil. And it's being shorted out. So the coil is being shorted out. And then the, um, as that reverse current switches, it goes negative in current and it raises the battery voltage. And then as we scroll over, you can see what happens. That purple ringing is the coil voltage. So it's ringing and you can see it's at, uh, well, it's off the screen here. It's at 500 volts per division. It's off the screen. So that's over 5,000 volts peak to peak on that one. Um, and you can see it's kind of doing the same thing. And the idea is to achieve similar little peaks to that. But actually we want the uh, we want the noise in there. And there's not that much noise in there. There's a little bit. And then you can see the noise in that one big time. That's a, uh, a big gap. And then another fire. 
and then that's the short and then we have a fire again right there and you can see the voltage goes up the current dips down so if I go out a little bit here you can see the whole cycle so anything current going up is current being used anything below the zero reference is going down so just some interesting things there that we were kind of looking for and testing out and trying different things um, according to some known understanding yeah look how how high in that voltage is. Okay, now I've advanced the timing so it fires right there. You can see it's, um, you know, actually pretty far on the wrong side. So it's firing this entire time all the way through that cycle. Then it shorts right there. And then it starts pulsing the next revolution. And then we got a fire, then a short, and then we start on the next cycle. So let's uh, let's see the difference there between this and what we had last time. All right. I don't know. You can see it sparking there. Sparking pretty good. Turn some lights off here. So now the induction cycle is on the other side. Now we can see a totally, uh, totally different result here. Now if we look inside, look what we get. We get that in the break, we get a really big arc. And that has to do with how the, uh, how the coil is set up, but that's a really big big arc there. Let me see if I can get a better screenshot of that. Okay, so it's running and as I showed you, there's a big nice spark when it hits that uh, gap, the firing gap. You can see my meter is set to minimum and I'm actually achieving a negative value on the meter, negative 0.15. It's not consistent. Obviously it's using more positive, but every once in a while you will see a hit of negative. Before we go on, I wanted to express one thing. There's a lot of people going to be like, Russ, why are you using mechanical um, switching and commutators and all this problem? Why not just use semiconductors and MOSFETs and transistors and IGBTs? And the reason is very, very simple. It's because when you're dealing with a phenomenon you don't understand, or I should say that you're trying to understand and look for for things that happened originally, then you use original type equipment and you understand what's really going on before you go to solid state. Now, the other part of this is, and I believe that it may not be achievable with solid state. This might not be that easy. But look here, I put about 40 volts in, 39.6. And I got back about 1.26 thousand. So, um, 1,260. Okay, that's how many volts I got back. So, that'll break just about any generic MOSFET or transistor you throw around. And if you're not careful, you will basically destroy your electronics in the matter of the first time you turn it on. So, that's the reason for the mechanical. So hopefully that clears some stuff up. Oh, welcome back. So uh, this is just a addition to this video. I don't actually know exactly where I left off, so I'm just going to start here, give you guys an idea of uh, a little bit of what I learned and where I'm headed. So uh, here's this nice coil that Richard wrapped. 76 miles of wire, I believe it is. That's a lot of wire. Number 30, AWG. And this particular coil, okay, don't forget, is designed from the replication of Newman's original that he sent to the patent office. It's a very close representation of that. Um, there's a picture of it, and you can find information on it and it really really closely resembles that original device um, and on that device there was a commutator that was 
just like this. Okay, this is a commutator specified by Newman on what the device was supposed to do and how it's supposed to work. So the interesting thing is is that this device actually produces RF. So, you know, his um, discovery later on was slightly different, I believe, than what his original discovery was. In my opinion, he discovered that you could generate RF with this system, and that's how the energy could be extracted. And so, along with that, he designed this type of commutator. So I never really gave a good explanation of this commutator, so I'll do it real quick. So you've got these connections, all right, connected to one half of the big bars there, and then on the other side you got another half. And some of you might be asking, well, what is, what is this here? Okay, these are shorting out all of these small segments. Okay, so you guys saw when I added the capacitor that uh, it started speeding up. All right, and how the system was working was when that um, energy of the collapsing magnetic field was going back into the cap and or the cap was charging through the commutator and it would short out, it would generate a burst of current which sped up the motor. That's my current understanding of how that was operating. So, with that said, um, this commutator and this coil is designed for RF. Now, in some of my research, I've been focusing on the induction effect, right? So I want to know how how well does the big magnet induce into the big coil and is that usable and is that part of what Newman was trying to do and what he did and the answer is yes so this coil was producing RF and when the patent office actually tested this device they grounded it and remember what I said the coil is self series resonant to ground okay in the megahertz range so according to some of my tests, I believe that to be 100% true, and the patent office grounded out the machine and did not measure things properly. So that makes perfectly good sense of why they came up with their reason for failure. Um, however, uh, I have seen three independent verifications that this works in the RF field. The magnet itself has one wire leading from that magnet to this gyro power, which then leads to ground. The magnet is totally insulated away from the coil or any electricity into it. The uh, lights at the top are hooked across this coil in parallel with it. And as you see this unit pivot back and forth and the sparking takes place, every time that happens, it runs current through those lights, which then runs back into the coil. These four bulbs running around the system has one wire hooked to one lead of the battery and going to ground. You can take any battery pack you want to, hook these bulbs to it, hook one wire to that battery in the ground, it will not light. And it's a very interesting thing to dabble with. However, like I said, I'm more interested in induction. So, that is why I made this commutator. All right. This commutator has been through a lot recently. I've modified it here and there. I put in some isolated brakes and a few other things. Um, on the brushes, as you saw, I added the carbon. Let's see, it's over here. Grab that. So this is the uh, this is the carbon brushes, and as you can see, they've been through a little bit of fun. Um, now. What I learned with this guy is I wanted to fire all right, the commutator 110 degrees and then have the ability to short it for 35 and then open it for 35. So I just left it just like this. Now what I discovered doing this is that you could actually get an induced magnetic field from the magnet in the same direction as the applied current. And what's interesting about that is that it looks like a dip in current on the oscilloscope, but what it actually is, is it's current more than the applied. 
And so it looks like it's going in the wrong direction, but it's actually going in the same direction. Now you can hook it up backwards and you can get a different effect. So I wanted to explore that. Now the bad thing with exploring that with this particular coil is this coil is best at generating the RF energy. Okay, and I'm focusing on the induction for a while here because I want to see how that works. See how that is actually functioning in this motor. Because it's inducing while running. It's a, it's a very different phenomenon uh, than just your standard, your standard setup. Um, people in the comments have been saying, you know, well, yeah, it's just induction. You know, this is the same thing you can do with a motor. If you take power off, you can spin it faster and it'll apply, it'll, it'll produce power. But it does it in a, in a way that cr creates cogging. And this is doing it in a way which actually helps the system. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. If not, go back and watch, uh, I believe it was video 14, how I explained that. And yes, that seemed common sense. Um, if you just sit down and look at what's going on. But at the same time, most of our devices are not like that. Most of our devices are, we look at a, at a coil acting as a magnet, right? Where the north would be like here and the south would be down there. That's actually not quite the case. Other things are happening, right? There's a whole other thing happening that makes us judge that the coil acts like a magnet, but it's, it's not the same. Everything's at 90 degrees, and we're forcing it to act as a magnet. And so there are other things that we can do with the coil, especially one of this size, okay, with induction. However, because of the terrible flux coupling, and the magnet is, uh, well, you know where what it looks like, but it's in the other room. But because of the terrible flux coupling, all right, because I got the magnet sitting out here, all right, because of the terrible flux coupling, you can't really get the same effect as what Newman originally did. Um, and this is okay, but this is, uh, you know, different than what, I, what I'm trying to explore. Um, so the point is, is that, I made this commutator and you can see how the carbon is building up on it. All right, and I had to fill in some holes because it completely shorted out. You can sh see how big of a of a poof one day it made. I'll throw some footage in here of all the I had a flash over and there's lots of carbon floating in the air. You can see it. It's like a wonder world of carbon. Not so helpful. It's going to land on everything. Uh, all the, um, basically what happened is the battery jumped the gap and created an arc through the high voltage coming out of the coil, created an arc carbon path, and then just started burning the uh, fiberglass until it went about halfway through the thickness of this board, and it's pretty thick. So I had to fill it in with some uh, light cured resin. And uh, that worked actually pretty good, but you can see I got to go back and clean that carbon all the time. It burns into the board. So carbon, uh, for this particular, you know, reason that it leaves some some mess behind, it's not really helping what I want to try to do. So actually, the next step is actually finishing the controller and the circuit board, which I will show you in detail in the next video and uh, opto isolate everything so there are actually fiber optic cables there so like I said I'll I'll show you that in the next video I just want to give you a glimpse of it um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore okay very accurate timing of the device mechanically and electrically electronically I should say firing this thing now this thing produces ridiculously large spikes and voltage and EMF and you know impulses and it really starts screwing with stuff matter of fact the the Geiger counter sitting right there starts beeping and going crazy but it's because of the electric field uh, not because of the radiation and then there's a couple Geiger counters or uh, I guess I should say neutron detectors not Geiger counters that's Geiger counter neutron detectors in here I haven't uh, I don't I have some bubbles in there but I think it's just from background radiation so I'm going to be continue checking that but uh Anyway, I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the fact that this coil is really designed to produce RF. So the faster you switch it and the more times you interrupt it, and you interrupt it at the right time according to how the voltage is generated through the, um, um, don't forget I like to say the back EMF, which is the slamming 
of the coil to a stop, um, going from flowing current to slamming of a stop. Right, and I'll explain more of that in actually next Wednesday's video, or this coming Wednesday, whichever day you watch this. Um, and I'll explain more of my thoughts behind that and show you some more interesting scope shots that I have gathered. So, I'll let you guys go. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And uh, don't forget about Charlie back there. Hi, Charlie. Cool. Charlie's my, my good friend. He hangs out with me every day. All right, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And uh, we will uh, we will continue exploring, and I'll starting start to get into the RF side of this coil, and uh, maybe we can build a better one for the induction effect, so we can look at that a lot closer because it's very, very interesting. All right, peace out, God bless, have a good day, and I'll see you another day. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Bye.